Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for the first of our, our two meetings this afternoon. We've got the, the new school coordinator webinar, and uh, we look forward to running you through uh, several several items as we uh, we get ourselves going. We're all a little bit out of practice uh, as we start getting back to face to face um, meetings and, and that sort of thing. But today it was it was quite apt to uh, to make this possible over over Zoom. So thank you to everyone who's who's joined us. We've got about 13, 14, 15 people uh, on on the call at the moment. Um, just some guidelines. We've we've tried to set it up as best we can, but in case we haven't, uh, just sort of making sure everyone's got microphones muted and webcams off. Um, we are recording this uh, this meeting just purely for the, the benefit of putting it back online for those that have missed uh, tonight, that uh, would like to sort of, or, or for those that have joined us uh, this afternoon that would like to get uh, a bit of a run through about everything that they might have missed uh, or, or we lost over pretty quickly. Um, quite often it's the case that uh, these things are great right now and then when you go to use the uh, the information uh, two months down the track it, it's hard to remember so this will be a good way to remember the, uh, the information. Um, we're just asking that if there's anything in the chat it's, uh, it's generally um, not for feedback comments or opinion but uh, more so for, for questions and we'll do our, our best to get to those as, as we can. We're going to be very tight for time, uh, a bit of a scheduling error on, on my behalf and um, we're going to rush through this one. Uh, we thought we had another 15 minutes, but it will, uh, it will not be the case. So uh, we'll finish uh, just probably about 4.25 on this one so we can get going on the next one at 4.30. Uh, the schedule, we've got John Dyson, who's the, the chair of the Victorian Interschools Advisory Group, uh, sitting sitting next to me. And uh, we've also got David Spears, who's the Victorian Interschools Event Manager. So. Um, we're going to cover off a few things and, and uh, a little bit later on we'll have Nicole Roach from the Geelong College who's a snow sports coordinator there um, joining the, uh, the call as well and at the end uh, pending time we'll, we'll have some opportunities for questions so I'll now hand over to uh, to John Dyson. Thanks Steve and let me join with Steve in welcoming yeah, everyone to the first time snow sports coordinators meeting we really appreciate everyone giving up their time today. As Steve mentioned, yeah, my name is John Dyson and I have the great honour of being the chair of the Victorian Institute School Snow Sports Advisory Group, or as we like to call it, yeah, VISAG. As first time snow sports coordinators, welcome to the Institute School Snow Sports family. It is a wonderful community and I'm sure that you and your student athletes will really enjoy the experience of Inter Schools in 2022. I'd like to begin the meeting by acknowledging the traditional owners and custodians on the land of which the Office of Snow Australia is located, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I'd also like to acknowledge the Tongarong people, the first people of the rivers and the mountains, who have been the owners and the custodians of Mount Bula, our host mountain, and that surrounding land and flora and fauna for tens of thousands of years, and their leaders past, present and emerging. After two years of frustrations and cancellations, it is great to be talking about and planning for East Schools 2022. I speak on behalf of all of our stakeholders when I say we are excited and very confident about hosting the event again at Mount Bullard in August of this year and welcoming back our student athletes, their parents and schools. Snow sports coordinators are one of our most important stakeholders. You are our conduit to the student athletes, their parents and the schools. And we thank you again for being available today and joining our community. Before I pass across to Deb Spies, the event manager, and Deb has been doing this now for 10 years, I'd like to make some comments about VizEgg. So VizEgg sits within the National Inter-Schools and Sport Development Framework under the custodianship of Snow Australia. VizEgg was established in 2021, following a review by Snow Australia of all of its committees, and it replaces the Victorian Institute Rules Snow Sports Committee, BISC. BISEG has an advisory role and provides support and advice for sport, all the ski lifts, and the resort in planning and delivering of inter schools. Snow Australia has an existing hosting agreement with Bola Ski Lifts for the hosting of the event, and Bola Ski Lifts is responsible for all aspects of delivering and managing the event. BISEG includes representatives from our schools, the resort, Bola Ski Lifts, and the sport. Bola of Interest, Snow Australia is currently calling for expressions of interest from snow sports coordinators to be part of a Victorian Snow Sports Schools working group. 
which most likely will consist of 10 to 20 snow sports coordinators from across section of the schools that can provide VISAG and BSL with information and feedback on particular issues in relation to the schools. We are anticipating a light workload with this role. So if you're interested in providing feedback and suggestions for the event, please apply. There's information available, or there will be information shortly available on Snow Australia's website. Uh, the members of VISAG are listed here, and as you can see, there's a strong representation from our schools, plus the CEO of Mark Buller and Mark Sterling ARB, as well as the general manager of Buller Ski List, plus, of course, Dave and Steve Nelson, the national participation and sport development manager for Snow Australia. Please be assured we are here to help and support you in your role as snow sports coordinators. We appreciate that after two years of event cancellation, we are expecting and anticipating an increase in the number of first time snow sports coordinators. So please do not hesitate to reach out to us if we can provide any support or assistance. So please now let me pass across to Dave, our event manager, who will walk you through the entry system. Thank you, John. Thank you, Steve. It's a pleasure to have you all on the call and the, the, the webinar tonight. Um, our new coordinators or those that have taken up positions at new schools, uh, welcome. And uh, yeah, this meeting is really designed for you to be able to sort of navigate your first look at the event entry system quickly. And our general meeting that starts at 4.30 today will cover more in depth um, rules and, uh, and more specific things around the inter schools, but really focus this uh, next 15 minutes around you, the new coordinator. So the event itself, where we last left it in 2019, 6,800 event entries, over 3,100 participants, 228 schools. So from a, a coordinator um, perspective, the school registration is the first port of call. And, um, and if you haven't already, contacting me to find out whether the school's been registered before or if you've got a new login, uh, heading, heading down that path and been giving a login, which is your email address and a, uh, and a password, will have you be able to log into um, the, uh, the event entry system. So there's a stop share to get to the... Uh, oh, yes. Sorry, there's some technical challenges, I There we go, on the top of the entry system. Yeah. Thanks, Lee. So the event entry system, once you've received your uh, password and uh, using your email address, you'll log in like so, you'll select the right event. For this uh, example, I'm selecting uh, the 2021 event here. Obviously this year will be when the event loads live. Um, the, uh, uh, the event will be listed as the uh, 2022 event. Um, Great. Yes, Apologies for the technical difficulties. Give it one more go and then we may just move on. So. So snow ID lookup and registration whilst we're working through that is really something through the Snow uh, Australia website and also the Snow Racer website, thank you Steve, uh, where you can uh, find snow IDs. So you can do that by entering a name and a surname into the uh, snow ID lookup uh, to find an existing snow ID. And when you do, um, with your school entry, you can head to your participant list, which we'll do here. I'll give you an example. I'll Add a participant ID that I've got a snow ID from either the family or uh, the lookup 
on the Snow Racer website or the Snow Australia uh, website. This find function you can only get through the use of a Snow ID number and that will automatically find myself, um, who I am now a year 10 uh, participant in the school and I'll add that participant and then save the changes within the event entry system. To load teams in, I head to the team page um, and on each one of these, you'll see that there's existing teams here. And to access that team, I click on that, that line so that it's blue to be able to see who's involved in that team. And there's Dave Spears and Joe Bloggs, the team manager. To add a new team, hit the button. Let's pick out moguls. Say it's division one always an A team. The only reason we go to B team is if you have two teams and you have more than three competitors in most events or more than four in an Alpine event where you go to a B, C, D and E team, etc. Um, from there, I can then add a participant from the drop down menu. Larger schools will have up to 100 names here that you can then select from and then select them into a position. The position is just the first part of the start list, second part of the start list and third, not of great concern there but adding that position helps with the seating, selecting a team manager from the school, and then saving those changes, then uh, has that come through. To verify what your summary team list looks like, you head to the lists and team lists, and it'll give you uh, a summary of what you've ordered. Um, and then also heading through to the ticketing page, order a three-day uh, competitor pass, a three-day team manager pass, and, um, and then you can head through to uh, the invoice section of the website, which will then um, bring you the, the, the summary of entry costs, uh, lift ticket costs, and then also the B, the B pay uh, option or the credit card option. Uh, down the bottom, you'll see text there that it's advisable that you hang on to not paying too early. If, you're, if you do have changes, then obviously there'll be additional payments due that it just makes things um, you know, more complicated for yourselves. So uh, once you're dead sure that that's really uh, what the final lift order and event entry uh, looks like, then you can go ahead and pay uh, with the credit card or via BPAY there. The only other area here is really just adding team managers in on that page and you can just add um, mobile numbers and whether they're a season pass holder and volunteers uh, as well that you can add. So with volunteers, um, the, only, the only reason with small schools you need to be really um, uh, concerned with volunteers is if you've got over 12 Alpine event uh, entries or more than 10 ski event entries or more than six snowboard event entries, you'll be automatically assigned a volunteer position to fill, uh, which is a requirement of the event. Um, that will come up automatically in the volunteer section of, uh, of, the, uh, of your uh, homepage. And you, as soon as you've finished your entries, you can start allocating your volunteers to appropriate events where those volunteers' children might be participating in as soon as your entries are done. The entry system will open in the middle of June. So there's, uh, we have a number of schools that finish their entries in June and have all of their volunteers knowing what days they're gonna be volunteering weeks out from the event. So, which is also a handy thing to have. Um, that's really all I have to say there, Steve, uh, to stop sharing. Yep. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks, Steve. Move on from there. So this is what the Snow ID, Snow Racer lookup looks like. We'll just check on time. We'll move quite a, uh, along here pretty quickly through these slides, but being able to find that, and that's what the Snow ID lookup button looks like down the bottom. And you can enter a name, uh, a surname and a name to find a number or enter a number to find, to make sure that that's the appropriate uh, name that, you, um, that you're entering into your own participant list. Um, so please make sure your entire snow sport communities uh, are subscribed to the e-news, which can be done on the Vic Inter Schools website. 
Uh, start lists will be made live on the uh, on the Vic Inter Schools website from the 21st of July, um, uh, and um, the 1st of August for the main event week for the Ski and Snowboard Week. What that will allow is every family to go on and make sure that their children are entered in the events they think they should be entered in, and if they're not, they can call, they can contact you, the school coordinator, and say, hey, Johnny, Johnny's in the Alpine event, but he's not in the mobile event. Can you make sure that that's fixed before the event entry closure dates, which are the 25th of July for cross country, and Monday, the 8th of August. Uh, these are really important dates because um, the, we go into rolling of uh, 5,500 bibs a couple of days after Monday the 8th and um, uh, obviously a changing start list at that point isn't possible and we really hate seeing children missing events because uh, something slipped through the fingers. So that's why these start lists are made live early so that uh, we can reduce that chance as, as much as we can. On the, on the website, you'll see there's obviously the New South Wales ACT Queensland drop down, the Australian Inter School event drop down, and then obviously ours, the Victorian latest news. And then clicking on policies and important documents will take you to a page that will give you a Victorian lift access and entry price summaries that you can print off, important dates, summary uh, schedule, event poster that you can use for uh, marketing within the school uh, activity. A certificate of currency, risk management policies for your schools and long, long term calendars, competition guides, etc. Um, and these are what they look like, event schedules, um, etc. So uh, also on the website for schools planning and being able to get some uh, pre event training in, um, please uh, don't hesitate to contact the ball holidays team, they'll be able to let you know what availabilities there are for race trials if they're needed. Midweek, there are still uh, significant amounts of uh, opportunities there. Um, so, without further ado, we'll uh, flip to uh, Nicole Roach, who's one of our superstar coordinators and a new member of ISAG. And welcome to Nicole. We don't have Nicole. Okay. Yes, no, we do. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can. Excellent. Um, now I have to figure out how to share the screen. Um, or do you do that, Steve? Uh, if, you've, if you've got it, we're happy for you to, to go for it. So uh, um, down the bottom in Zoom, you've got a function to share it. Uh, no, right. I don't think I do. Just talk to it and everyone will hear it. All right, well, we'll just go without the PowerPoint. It has got beautiful pictures, but that's all right. Um, so I've been doing this role since 2016, which I just figured out for. It seems like a lot longer than that. Um, it's fabulous and it's a great opportunity to get to know lots of kids and families in your school. So um, that's one of the reasons why I love it. Obviously also sharing my love of snow and all things snow sports with them is great. Um, one of the things I just wanted to run through a few things that I wish someone had told me before I started. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to take some things away from um, what I've got to say. So obviously the dates and costs are now on the website, so on, on the Victorian Interschools website. So um, you can start preparing how you're gonna collect your entry um, data. I use a custom form built by our IT gurus, but try booking works well as well. It's really important you have a gateway um, to collect payment, um, or otherwise you have to do that in a more manual process, which I used to do, but it is much easier to get it all in one hit. Um, some schools will need to charge a levy to make to be able to take staff up there. If you're going to do that, you will probably need two forms: one with the levy built in, so and then one with the without a levy, so people who make a mistake and there will be at least ten every year um, can add things into their event. The data that you'll need, um, and it seems obvious, but it's not always necessarily so, and it's for things for filling in their entry data into the entry system, but also for um, helping with snow racer. Um, I'm a control freak, so I don't um, rely on the parents to do it. I will jump in and put them in if need be. Um, so I then could therefore collect address, email address, mobile number, postcode to make that simple. And then obviously which events they want to go in, um, lift passes, how many days, etc. Any uniform um, things you want to sell to them, you put in there. 
parent contact the days that they're available for volunteering and hopefully that's every day they're up there but you know sometimes um, if they've got multiple children they'll be busy on certain days and then how many days a parent might need to lift past four as a, as a team manager um, and then your total cost so they're the things that I need to get um, I thought it might be helpful to run through what I do from a communication perspective um, I let people know at the start of the year or as soon as the dates are finalized when the inter-schools are and encourage them to book accommodation because that is probably the biggest trick to the whole thing getting them up there um, we call for entries in may at the end of may or june and then close entries um, in the last week of term two um, then you can do your admin over the holiday time but then i really close them the week after the holidays because there's always a few lateies um, and then that gives you the opportunity to communicate your team managers and volunteer positions and the teams most importantly in the events um, in that last week of July to give you a bit of wiggle room. Um, I use a spreadsheet, it's a monster. Um, I'm very happy to share it to take all my entry data. Um, and then I will put it into the entry system once I have that um, all organized and ready to go so that um, I only have to do it once. So I pre-plan the teams and everything before I put that in. Um, with regard to selecting teams, some schools will have trials. We don't. Um, we have 70 odd. We will have 70 odd competitors this year. And we started with seven, so small schools. It can go bigger, get bigger than Ben Hur very quickly. Um, so we don't do trials because of budget and we don't have time. And a lot of our families don't necessarily ski at Bullock, so we find that difficult. Um, selecting teams is fine unless you have competitive skiers. And if you do, you'll know because they'll tell you. The position in the team doesn't really make a difference, so I don't think you need to stress. I use past results, any current training or squad or competition results that they have given me, the years that they've been skiing and their general athletic ability from other sports to help me select. And so far, I've never had a complaint, so that's a pretty good sign. Um, unless they're a competition family, parents are only concerned if their child seems to be the only person in their team, like if you have nine kids and there's one sort of, in the, in the third team, um, then they might be worried, but we all consider, we consider all of our skiers in any event as part of the team. So no one's really alone. And once they're assured of that, they're fine. If I'm not sure of the order, and sometimes it can be a bit, you know, dicey, I ask the students in their senior years, they know who should go where, and they usually tell you pretty straight. Um, and often I'll ask the parents with the younger years, um, they certainly often ski together and they know which kids should be where. Um, and as long as they think you know what you're doing, they pretty much tell, tell you the honest truth. Um, logistics, so bib and lift passes, um, I prepare a pack for each student and they collect them on the Thursday prior to interschools. Um, team manager packs, so for all the parents, I email that information to each one so that they can either print it out or have it on their phone or for when they're up there. And our staff, so I have me and somebody else usually up there, um, have laminated daily summaries of all the events, teams and contacts. And lamination is very important because otherwise they get wet. Um, so team managers, um, each team in each event. So if you've got three teams, you'll need three team managers in the Alpine as an example. Um, they're responsible for getting the team to the start line, assisting with the course inspection, bibs, protests, although if that happens, they should contact a staff member and morale. Um, I share the duties around within each, you know, if certain children are doing three events, then, you know, the same parent wouldn't be the team manager for each time. Um, but I do tend to use the more experienced parents where possible. Um, our school requires all of our um, volunteers to have completed a volunteer form and working with children's check prior to the inter-schools. So just check with your school as to what they require. Team managers can access half price lift passes through the entry system. And I don't allocate staff as team managers because then they're stuck in one place. So sometimes we need to be in many places. Similarly with course volunteers, as David said, we're required to provide a certain number of volunteers proportional to entries. Um, Interschools provide the information for the roles. Um, and again, I share them around within the division. Volunteers can access free lift passes for their volunteering day. And again, I don't allocate staff to those roles. And the things that someone should have told me before I started, before you hand out the lift passes, and this is really important, write their names on them and take a photo of everyone. 
because if they leave it at home or lose it, which they will, they can be replaced by Bula Services. I learned that one the hard way, so now I do it. Um, if bibs are lost, they can be replaced at the start of the event. Just make sure you know the student's race number and I put those all in the team manager information so that they can do that if required. Um, spare hand warmers, sunscreen, all of those things because you will need them for somebody. It's cold, so wear lots of layers. Um, even on a hot day, it's cold when you're standing still. The Mount Buller app is fantastic. It has the bus timetables, resort maps, etc. especially if you're not a regular Buller skier, which I was not when I first started. Um, that's very helpful. And finally, for most schools, um, inter-schools isn't about winning. There's only one of them, and then, you know, there's not that many compared to everyone who's in it, um, but about the joy in participating, learning and making new friends. So if you make it about that, the families will too. Um, I'm around. If anyone needs a hand, I'm more than happy to have an email. Um, my email address will be sent. I'll, we'll send these slides around or someone somehow we'll get these to you. And, uh, yeah, good luck and look forward to seeing you out there. Nicole, that was fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that experience. I'm sure that that is so valuable for our first time snow sports coordinators. And as you said, we'll make sure that that presentation is made available on, on the website. So thank you again, that was excellent. Thanks, thanks Nicole. We'll, uh, we'll add those slides to uh, the document that we'll publish on the website, as well as this recording. So uh, any questions there, and we encourage any of you on the call that have specific questions of Nicole or myself uh, to uh, email me at info at vicinterschools.com.au and we'd be delighted to take any feedback on or any questions and we're here to help. Uh, in any way we can. Um, so uh, please don't hesitate to shout out. So uh, our following meeting in three minutes is the, the general meeting uh, for our returning coordinators as well as new. A lot of the information in that will be absolutely relevant to all of you that are on this call. So hopefully you can join us there. And uh, as I say, uh, please don't hesitate to ask for any assistance if you uh, require it. Thank you all. I think we've got one question. On the check? Oh, it was about um, access to the spreadsheet. Okay, fantastic. Okay, well, thank you again, everyone, for dialing in today, and hopefully you will dial in to the uh, main meeting in a few minutes' time. So thank you again, and we look forward to uh, seeing you on the slopes in uh, 2022. Thank you.